In this video, I will continue to use an example to explain the mathematics behind how PCA reduce dimension. This is the last step, which is step 5. Note that steps 1 to 4 have been covered in earlier videos. So let us first recall what we have done so far from steps 1 to 4. At step 1, we have recentered the original data set to the origin. So if you can see, the blue color is the original data set. So all we did was to shift the whole data set such that the center is now at 0, 0. So the red data points are your new shifted and recentered data set. In step 2, we computed the covariance matrix C. And this is the covariance matrix C, which represents the variability of the bivariate data. It does not matter if C represents the red color data points or the blue color data points because they are distributed in the same shape, only the center is different. As step 3, we have analyzed the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the covariance matrix C and we have also computed the percentage of variability captured by the principal components. So the first principal component captured 96.3% of the total variance whereas the second principal component, PC2, capture only 3.7% of the total variance. And at step 4, we have written out two possible transformation matrix, V, based on our decision to retain or discard the principal components. So if we choose to retain both the principal components, then this is our transformation matrix V which is made out of PC1's eigenvector 1 in the first column and PC2 eigenvector 2 in the second column. Now if you choose to discard PC2 because the amount of variance captured is very small and we choose to retain PC1, then I will write the transformation matrix V as a single column of eigenvector 1 which is PC1. So now we can get on to see how transformation is done in PCA. So all the information that we need is already here. The covariance matrix, the eigenvalue eigenvectors, and the two possible transformation matrix. So we can now transform our data set to get our new data set by taking y equals to xv. So here y is a matrix of the new data set. X is a matrix of your original data set and V is your transformation matrix which you should choose either this if you were to keep both components, both PC or it should be this if you choose to keep PC1 and discard PC2. Now I'm going to demonstrate for both of these situations. So suppose I choose to retain both PC then this is my V and if I were to do the transformation y equals xv where x is the original data set which is the data points in the scatter plot here this is the original data set remember that the star helps me to indicate that this is the original data set and after transformation this is my new data set so the scatter plot of the new data set is actually called a score plot and each of the values of the new data set is actually called the scores. So how do I get the scores? So I'm going to take the matrix of the original data which you can see I have already written down in a matrix form here where there should be 10 rows because there are 10 sample and 2 columns because there are 2 variables. And also the transformation matrix V which in this case I'm explaining when we retain both PC so this is the V that I'm going to use. So if we do a matrix multiplication you can see that this is a 10 by 2 and this is a 2 by 2 so as a result I should get a 10 by 2 matrix. So if I were to multiply by hand this is a row multiplied to a column and a row multiplied to a column and this is what I'll get. So my first set of original data point which is here after transformation became this new set of data point which we call scores so the first set of scores is here 
with value of 3.459 and 0.211. Let's try another one. Let's look at the second original data pair. So take this row, multiply by this column, and then take this row, multiply by this column. This is what I get. So this is a transform data pair, which we call scores. So the second data pair used to be here. After transformation, it is now here. So this can continue for all 10 data pairs. Now why do we say that PCA is taking linear combinations? This is the observation for the first variable. Let me call them x1 star because it's the original one. And this is the observation for the second variable. Let me call them x2 star. Now in taking this multiplication, all the transform first variable is actually taking each of the first variable and multiplying to 0.678 and each of the second variable and multiplying to 0.735. So this column of observations, which is a transformed observation, is actually 0.678 of the first variable plus 0.735 of the second variable. Now in the same way, the second transformed variable is actually taking each of the first variable, 2.5 for example, multiplying to 0.735 and then taking each of the second variable and multiplying to negative 0 0.678. So that's 0 0.735 of the first variable minus 0 0.678 of the second variable. So in PCA, linear combination of the original variables are taken to form new variables. And from the picture, try to see that the original data points has been rotated in some sort of a clockwise direction, downwards and looking like this. So what is happening is that the axis of maximum variance is now the new horizontal axis. But if you notice, there's also some sort of reflection going on. For example, the first data point was below the axis, yet now is above the axis. And uh, let's take a look at the sixth data point. It was above the axis and now it is below the axis. So in this case, the transformation includes a rotation and a reflection. Now what if we decided to discard this PC which captures a very low amount of variability? So our V will only be made out of PC1 and putting it into a matrix multiplication, Y equals to XV the scores, which is a transformed variable, will be equals to the original data set, which is the data matrix X, multiply to V, which is only one column because it's only PC1. PC2 has been discarded. So in this matrix multiplication, we can see there is a 10 by 2 matrix multiplying to a 2 by 1 matrix, which will give a result of a 10 by 1 matrix. So you can do this multiplication by hand which is to take this row, multiply to the column. So the first data pair, which is 2.5 and 2.4, can be multiplied to 0.678 and 0.735. Adding together, we get 3.459. So what this means is that this data point has now been transformed to here. Let's look at one more. So the second data pair is 0 0.5, 0 0.7, multiplied to 0 0.678, 0 0.735. I get a 0.854. So what it means is that this data point has been transformed to this data point. So from these plots, we see that a bivariate scatter plot has now become a univariate single dimension plot. Hence, in this case, PCA managed to reduce one dimension. If I were to write this out as a linear combination, I will have the first column being x1 star. So this is a vector of observations on the first variable and this x2 star, which is a vector of observations on the second variable. 
So in this multiplication, I will always be taking the first variable multiplying to the first number here and the second variable multiplying to the second number here. So I can write this as 0 0.678 multiplying to the first variable plus 0 0.735 multiplying to the second variable. Hence, PCA is a linear combination of the old variables to get the new variable. So what I've shown you is PCA partially by manual computation such that every step is outlined so that we'll understand the workings of PCA. Now actually Minitab allows us to go from step 1 right up to step 5 in a few simple clicks. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So I'll be doing PCA using Minitab and I have the original data set already input into my worksheet. So to call on PCA, I need to go stat, multivariate, and you can see principal components. Let's click on it. So you choose your data set, which is the two variables, x1 star and x2 star. And you can, at this point of time, decide how many components you want to keep. So suppose we are not sure yet. Suppose I'm not sure whether I want to keep both component or only keep one component then I'll just put two to play safe because if later on I choose to only keep one component I just have to ignore the second columns and so what we're doing now is to do PCA using covariance to measure variability let's go to graphs now let's click on all the plots to see what's going on and let's go to storage so they will ask you whether you want to store the coefficients. So what is this coefficient? It is a coefficient of the linear combinations, which is actually the eigenvectors. So if you want to store them, you can maybe choose um, two columns to store because there are two set of eigenvectors. So perhaps C3 and C4. As for scores, I will also choose two columns to store them, which is probably C5 and C6. Eigenvalues will be churned out when the PCA process is over, so I'm, I don't need to store them. So that's all I want to see, perhaps, just the coefficients, which is the eigenvectors, and the scores, which is the transform data. So I'm ready. Just click OK. So let me share the results of my PCA first. What can I see here? So I have the eigenvalue here, which is what I've calculated to be 1.284 and 0.49. And this is the proportion, this is the percentage of the total variance accounted for by this eigenvalue. This is a cumulative of the proportion. And I have here PC1 with these coefficients and PC2 with these coefficients. And PC1 is basically the eigenvector 1 and PC2 is the eigenvector 2. Let me go to my worksheet to see whether what I have stored is there. So I've chosen C3 to C4 to store my eigenvector. Does it match with what I see here? So my PC1 is 0 0.678.735, matches with my first eigenvector. PC2 matches with the second eigenvector. And I've chosen C5 and C6 to store all the scores. I'll show you later where I can see this visually later. Now let me look at the graphs. So the first one is perhaps the outlier plot. So this outlier plot shows me that all the data points are within a certain band calculated by this Mahalanobis distance. So there is no outlier. I'm safe. Let's continue. Let's look at another graph. Score plot. So this score plot is basically this plot that we've seen just now. It is a scatter plot of the transform data and this transform data is called scores and plotting them gives you the score plot. So why do they look slightly different? Because I've adjusted the scale so that the scale of the x-axis and the y-axis are more consistent with each other. So if you like to do that, I'll show you how. You can go to one of the scale 
and edit the scale and make sure that they have the same scale range. So now it looks like the score plot that we have seen just now. Let's look at another plot. We have here something called a scree plot. This is very useful in helping us decide whether to retain or discard PCs for multivariate data with three variables and above. In this case, because it's only a bivariate data, then I must say that this is really not useful. So let's ignore this for now. Let's look at another plot. Now we have this loading plot. This loading plot is slightly difficult to understand, but let me try to bring back a slide we've talked about before. This scatter plot was shown in step 3. So in this scatter plot, I've drawn PC1 and PC2 based on my eigenvectors. If I were to shift the x1 axis up to this black arrow, and if I were to shift this x2 axis to this black arrow, so I have four arrows here, x1 axis, x2 axis, PC1, and PC2. So let's compare these four arrows to the loading plot. So in this loading plot, the scale of the X and the Y doesn't seem to be consistent. So let me change it first. So this is a different perspective from just now. Now the horizontal axis is actually PC1. The vertical axis is actually PC2. And this is your X1 variable or your X1 axis. And this is your X2 axis. And if you match them, put them side by side, you will notice that a rotation and a reflection has happened. We will interpret this loading plot with a context example in class. In the meantime, let me explain a few more plots. Now we have here the by plot. It's basically the loading plot, which is here, and the score plot combined together. That's why it's called a by plot. In an example with a context, this plot is actually very useful for interpretation. So this is the end of my demo of the PCA as well as Minitech.